Yeah. Any general question while I try to bring up my PowerPoint? Any question at all on what we've done so far? You know, this Sunday and next is pretty much a close out the book. We're finished with the book. We're trying to summarize, we're trying to clear any gap, any question whatsoever as we close it. I have a summary I'm putting together, but the computer is not allowing me so far. So, um, but if you don't, I, I, I have, I can still make it up because I have the old um, slide I can start. But if you have a question that would help us to be more focused. So, I have because you have, uh, all right, go ahead with yours while I try to bring this to up. All right. Okay, like I said, I have just something to say, not a question. Oh, not a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to appreciate um, uh, reading this book. You know, um, I really, when I saw the title, I was really interested. Uh, and I'm glad I read through. And we went through the, you know, the times. The more you kind of talk about something constructively, if you're interested, you will pick out quite a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Did I stop you? You are mute. You are mute. We are meet yourself now. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. All right, you went because of the fact that, um, mm. you know, it's been on my mind, the scripture of Jesus asking no. us to learn from the children of this world and all that kind of, um, I'm a lot. My antennas are up and the mailman kind of um, summarized quite a lot for me. And then when he got to the place of career and calling, I appreciated that fact, you know, because um, I'm in a world where there's a confusion of um, what a call is and there's a battle for, for some people who believe that, oh, I'm in ministry. Therefore, I don't have to work in quotes, you know, but that helped a lot to settle the matter of the fact that when the Bible says, if you don't provide for your family, for instance, especially for a man who has children and a wife, or basically you're a human being and you don't want to work, but you want to eat, you know, and I, I, I appreciate how the book tries to, you know, um, how the book was presented, I appreciate that about the seasons of life and all. So I just want to say, um, God bless you for bringing up the book. It, 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 it helped my journey, yeah. It helped awesome. my journey. Yeah, it helped awesome. my journey. So, you know. So. Uh, thanks, so, my it, sister. It, it, awesome. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're doing this, you know. And that's the reason why we're going to go into the next book, next book, next book, next book. It's for all of us benefit. You know, the, uh, God intentionally sent us here with an empty head. He put a disc in us, in our heart, but he did not put anything in our head. It was blank. It was blank. So everything you get about living in this world did not come from God. He came from this world. He put purpose in our heart, but did not put anything in our head. Right? And that's why he said, the only first commandment with a promise is that you all know your father and your mother. You all know your guidance. People that gave you information or people that were supposed to give you all the information you need to live this life successfully. You did not bring it from heaven. Everything about living this life you got in this life. The only thing you brought from heaven is your purpose, right? The dance. You brought the dance from heaven, but you did not bring how to do the dance from heaven. Everything you got about living this life, you get here. So if you don't get it, you will not live right. You will not feel perfect, right? So from conception, you start getting information how to live, how to live, how to live. If you're in a place where you don't get the right information, you'll be a failure, right? First of all, you can blame your parents for that. Once you're about 18 years old, you, stop, you cannot blame anybody anymore. 
because you have everything you need to erase the whole information, right? Not perfectly, but to put in new information. That's why scripturally for us, we say that, um, um, but let the word of God, right? Let's expand that beyond that scripture. Let all the information you need to live this life successfully. Use it to erase everything that has been causing you to fail. Mm. So don't don't forget for us is it's 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 a good success he talks about in Joshua. Yeah. One. Not just success, it's, it's good mm. success. That means success spiritually, success psychologically, success physically, socially, socially, emotionally, emotionally, everything, mentally, everything. absolutely. Anything that is not there is not good success. So no. whatever you think about good. And success. That's what God wants you to have. So he says, take the word of God, take the right knowledge, take the right instruction, and it raise away everything that has been causing you to fail. Let this new knowledge transform you, not reform you. There's a level of reform. We're not talking about reform here. We're talking about transform you, transform you, transform you, cause you to be the living soul that God created you to be. That is your responsibility. It's not another person's responsibility. Before you are 18, no, it's another person's responsibility for whatever reason. You are living in someone's house. You are this, you are young, you don't have money, you don't have that. When you come to what we call maturity, it's, your, it's now your responsibility. It's not your pastor's responsibility. It's not your bishop's responsibility. You are now old enough to go and get the right information that will transform your life. So you can't blame anybody anymore, right? And that's why we're doing this, right? It doesn't really matter where you get wisdom from. The important thing is getting wisdom, right? And when I say wisdom, I mean wisdom, not, you know, people oh, defend and say, yeah, yeah. If people say devil wisdom. Well, devil wisdom is not wisdom now. Okay. We're not, we're not talking about, yes, foolishness. We're talking about wisdom. We're talking about something that comes from God. The way to live life, the way to succeed in life. Right? And one thing you, we need to know is that all truths are parallel. All truths are parallel. Why? Because truth is a person. The person is called Jesus. Right? So if, if there's a truth in Islam, that truth will work. Because that truth has no bearing on Islam, it has bearing on only one person Jesus Christ. If there's a truth in Oboni cult, it's called truth. It can be defined as truth. That truth will work for you. I don't care whether I'm taking it from Oboni or not. For as long as it can be called truth, right? It will work for me, right? But so it's not where you get the truth from. But typically how we, being Christians, right, we can judge truth is by the word. Because there's no truth that will go against the word. Because the word is Jesus Christ. You cannot get anything from the Holy Spirit as even from the, from the truth. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will not tell you a lie. So if anything you say you are hearing from the Holy Spirit does not agree with the word of God, you are lying. Because the Holy Spirit cannot change. He cannot lie. Right? So let me stop there so I don't take too much of time. But thank, thanks for that feedback. And, and that's the basis on which all the books we read. And don't forget, even when we read, we are, while reading this book, in chapter 3, we have to deviate. Right? Because we're Christians again. We judge the truth by the word of God. There will be no other truth higher than the word of God. Amen. And we saw that in chapter three, there was a bit of witchcraft. Yeah. I mean, it's witchcraft, right? Anything yeah. that you use to, to, to go and find out your future is witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. It's not of God. God does not want you to go and find God out your future. No. Yeah. All, these, all these people that are guarding into gym, uh, temples looking for, oh, what is it going about my future? It will work, it will not work. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Let's call it what it is. It's not of God. Anything in the, in the Bible tells you that any divination, any looking into crystal ball, it's of the devil. It's witchcraft. It might look nice. It might look, make you happy. Oh, I'm not, I'm not happy. Oh, I know how we know. I know how pass so. You are foolish. You are foolish. You are beginning to, 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 to have fellowship with demons and do not end well. It will not end well. God has not created any place for us to go and find out about the future. God is not interested in us even knowing the future. 
right? He has given us revelation. He has told us about how the world will end. But he has not told you specifically how to your tomorrow will be. And he's not interested in doing that. Anything like that is witchcraft. Because he limits you. He limits you. God has made us limitless. Limitless opportunities. Even God did not tell Israel how their hand will be going through the wilderness. That is witchcraft. You have to be careful. It's witchcraft. Anytime you do that, you are limiting your future. And you, and you are telling God, I can handle it. Stay off. I know it's human for us. So we all want to know, will I take get that promotion? Uh, will I get that job? Uh, will I do this? Stop worrying about that. Do the right thing. Make the best use of your today. That is the only thing that will guarantee your tomorrow. Right. Let me stop there. Um, any other question or any other comment? Toba, that's something to say. Yes, I need some comments in the chat. Uh, oh, you made some. Let me go look for it. All right. I was trying to talk about career and calling. All right, just tell me. Just, just say it one by one and we'll treat it. Go I ahead. was trying to talk about career and calling, and then she, she mentioned it while she was talking just now also. This yeah. issue and situation yeah. whereby people come up and then they resign their job, they leave what they are doing, they tell us they have a call, they have a call. I need us to discuss and uh, at, at what time should, should should that happen or what situation? I mean, how, what, what, how do we handle such a situation whereby somebody supposed to, maybe a new graduate, a fresh graduate, supposed to be looking for a job and then he's coming up to tell us there is a call or someone who has been working and it comes to a point, it just feels like you should leave his job. How do we marry the issue of call and career together? So I just want us to discuss in that light. All right, let me take it out. First of all, let me tell you, I've been doing this thing for the last 38 years. I, I got born again back in 1983. I have seen it all. All of what you have said, people saying they're leaving their job does not line up with scripture does not line up with scripture. Paul did not leave his job. Oh. Job Paul was still working. Oh. He was making tents. Oh. So I don't know how, how occupied these people do. I want to even call them foolish, but I'm holding myself back. It's foolishness. So oh. God never called anybody. I can almost bet my life. God doesn't call you to just leave everything like that and go and walk. You, your emotions was part of it. God does not do anything suddenly does not do anything suddenly. It does things step by step, precept upon precept. And we look through scripture and there's nobody. All right, let me step, take a step backwards and talk about the, the apostles, right? God, Jesus Christ called them to himself. They left what they were doing. Jesus Christ was there on earth. Oh, he was the one sponsoring their job. They were still working. Oh, they were working with him, right? So yeah, they, those feel like exception. But most often than not, God does not do that, right? And I'm telling you from 38 years of experience on that. Most often than not, God does not do that, right? Because God works with everything around you. God, God needed Paul. Don't, don't forget, Paul wrote the most part of the scripture, right? Peter spent more time with Jesus Christ. Paul did not even spend any time with Jesus Christ physically. Yet he wrote the largest part of scripture. Why? God needed the humanity of Paul. Paul was intelligent. Paul was cool. God needed all of that to achieve his purpose. Peter was not schooled. He was just an ordinary fisherman. He was limited in the mental intelligence realm. Yes, spirituality was endowed, but his spirituality was useless in affecting this world or it was limited in affecting this world because what he lacked intelligently. Paul had both of them. And that's why he excelled far more than Peter. God will never bypass your humanity. Don't let anybody deceive you. God respects what he has put inside of you. It is etin vessels that carry the anointing. The anointing doesn't erase your eating vesselness. It comes and works together with everything that you have to achieve the purpose of God. 
right? Let me quickly give some examples. You know, I see, I see in, in, in anybody that is prominent in life that you see, just go and check them. Once they have achieved, though, you will see someone writing something against them. People are jealous. People are stupid. People are blind. When they cannot attain something, they, all they do is talk about anybody, right? And I'll give you examples. Stephen Fortick, right, is not your ideal minister, right? He doesn't preach your Bible school. Let's read the best scripture. But that guy is anointed. That guy is anointed of God and is preaching the unadulterated word of God. But for a lot of old time religion people, they will, not, they will find it difficult to accept him. Why? Because he doesn't dress like they want them to dress. Like they want him to dress. He just dresses in a way he can reach a certain set of people. And there's nothing scripturally wrong with his dressing. It just doesn't meet the traditional way we see things, right? I'll go out of Christian fold and talk about people like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Seneca, Simon Sinek. I mean, Sinek, Simon or Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek. <laughs> Sinek, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Simon Sinek does not dress like your normal presenter. For a reason. He just wants to be himself. He could be dressing, wearing suit, and all of that, all of that. But that is not the essence of what the purpose God has for him. The purpose is to teach leadership, is to teach personal development. He wants to dress like the ordinary man so he can communicate to the ordinary man. It has nothing to do with the suit, it's the message. And his bless has gone far. So much so even my own company, you know, employs him to do some of this, right? What's the other name of that lady? Uh, Brenny Brown, or what's her name? Uh, something like that, Brenny Brown, you know? Same way, she comes plain. She doesn't dress all of this, you know, and just blesses you from what she has. And she's, she's a powerful speaker and all of that. I know I've deviated from your original question, but I'm just treating of it generally. Now let's go back. Let's, let me answer you directly. Calling is not easily identified unless you've had the God told me. Even when God tells himself, you get confused. Papa Egan did not know his calling, his true calling, his full calling until years, almost I'm all close to retirement. Because God works with us in transitional one step at a time. Because yeah. what you learned when you thought you were off, you need the all you've learned there to do the next one. What you learned here, you learned you needed to do the next one. Until you enter into the fullness of your calling, you, you don't have the capability to enter into the fullness of your calling right now. It's a journey, it's a process, it's a transition. Every step is important. Right, I started, you know, never. I didn't start as a teacher, right? I, I started back in school. I first of all joined the choir. I, I did I join the choir in school? No, I didn't join the choir in school. But I joined the um, hospital visitation. Hospital visitation was what I used to. I went in. And I did hospital visitation. I used to get all this word of faith, you know. I would go and take the word of faith and go and preach it to the people in the hospital and all of that stuff, you know. And I did all of that. And ah, then there was one particular boy that had a cancer, you know. And we just I used to pray, you know. Me, I love people. So there's no, you know, I became his friend, all of that stuff. Then when he died, I just challenged myself. I don't think this is a place God for me or me that I don't have anointing to heal people. All right. <laughs> That's how I left you. I left you. Me, I'm, you know, one thing you I can tell you about me, I don't do things that don't work. If I don't say it working, you won't find me long enough. You know, that's how I ran away from hospital visitation. My anointing cannot be healing people. Why should I be <laughs> no, So I ran away from that. I think I joined the, did I join the choir? No, I didn't join the choir. I then to join the band. We have a band in school, right? They were called the Jesus Generation Singers. So I was in a band until I left school. 
Uh, so I, I tried to learn the saxophone. I didn't perfect it, but I was one of the singers and all of that. So I left school, uh, NYC, I was in drama. So I did drama NYC, right? I came out of school then in, in uh, Gloryland. Gloryland is when I temporarily joined the choir. When uh, Mary, Mary, um, was my, was Pastor Mary, my dear friend, uh, you know, was leading the choir. You know, I stayed there. The one day she rebooked me. That was my last day in choir. You know, I, I ran away from choir. You know, it wasn't jelly. I have a musical tendency, but it wasn't just the, somewhere in my heart, it wasn't the place to stay, you know? So I did every other thing in glory, teaching, uh, teaching discipleship class and all of that, you know? And that's where I found my place, right? I love music, I love to dance, but that is not where my heart finds its rest. Somehow I found my rest here in teaching, right? But it's a journey, it's a journey. So take two steps backwards. I used to be, I'm trying to answer your question and I'm trying to, I'm also answering it different ways. I hope we're also getting some of the different ways. Uh, mm. I used to be surprised when I see people say, God has called me and you don't walk me. I used, it used to baffle me. I used to look for the scripture to justify it. I am here to find that scripture. Yeah, because there's, God has called, there's not a bit. Yeah. There's not a bit. Yeah. I'm I actually wrote. I wrote something okay. there. Go ahead. Uh, so, so I wrote something. I, I said okay. that um, uh, I said that it's happening here and now, as in career and calling is already happening now. Let's yeah. give it the attention required. God yeah. obviously does not separate them. Hence yeah. the commandments, those two, love God and our neighbor. Yeah. So we must focus on God here and now at the same time yeah. respond to our neighbor and ourselves yeah. you know well, I think we've talked about the ten commandments being divided into two the first four yeah. towards God and the last six towards man Jesus came and said the same thing and the truth is remember what we discussed that while you are finding your career the call is in it Absolutely. you must find it why you Absolutely. jam your call you might have jammed your call first the career is in need why because you must make money yeah, you must eat. Then you must eat and you must serve people with money. And two, Absolutely. you must serve people. You must serve people, which is the call. So he, he doesn't separate them. It comes in a Absolutely. package. Like there's something you said that touched me at the beginning. You said that God gives us a purpose from heaven, but the manual, the rest of the things on how to do it, we must get it from earth. So we kind of come head empty, but heart full. We come head empty, but heart full. So you can't separate the two as much as the heart is so important. We are on earth, so we must learn earthly things here and now. So we, we, we can't try to dissociate them to make ourselves look good. They are one. They are together. Yeah. So we must find God early, even in the night. Then we mm. must wake up in the morning and go and serve men. Yeah. So even if there's Sunday service or Wednesday service in the evening, it's men we are serving, or men men are serving us. So yeah. we can't. Let's not try to separate the two. It's yeah. happening. Even God is working. Yeah. Because God, God made work before the fall. So yeah. work is not an evil thing. It's just hard work that came in to distort yeah. it. But yeah. the work is the best gift that God has given us. What does that mean? We are creating with God. Yes. We are partners with him. So let's not throw away God's, you know, the Bible says a, 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 a is royalty that is a, someone that is royal and does mm. not know it's like a beast in the field. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can, you see, I see princes walking while servants are on horses. It's a, it's a misnomer. Yes. It's not done. It's through what? Through creating the power of creation that we have that satisfaction of, I mean, check out Genesis um, chapter 11, Abby. Where mm. they, they, they were of one voice, they were of one word. Yeah. Amos 3 3, except two will be agreed. So we yes. must find that center back again, per day yes. of our life. And like yes. he's like he's saying, we find we have adventure as we are describing, I say, oh, such an adventure. And that's what God gives every one of us an adventure part time. So some people wake up and say, Say, God said, say, you said, God said, No, God, God decides what happens next. The Bible says, as he wills, he redistributes all the giftings and talents and offices. Yes. 
You can't tell I'm this. No, God decides one morning to wake you up and say, hey, I need you to go and wash plate for me in that restaurant. Why? Because there's a soul there. He won't tell you. You just wake up, you find yourself probably, for example, in America, and you have, you're, you're a cook in a place. And you're to a doctor. But because as you wake up in the morning or in the night, you are praying. You're in the place of prayer. God endows you spiritually. And you're working your work and you're winning souls for him. That's a pleasure. He said he made us for good, for good works. Work, his work must be created in Christ Jesus. So you can't separate the two. That is how God expresses. Now you're going to meet people. Stand aloof on the altar. It won't work. Yeah. It won't work. So if you say you have a call, God will force you out of his love. He will guide you into meeting people. Yes. It, it is work. You must, if you, are, you say you are doing calling, you will look. The men that are succeeding in ministry are men who have seen their work in ministry. So they spend time oh. preparing. Yes. Spend time. You think prayer is easy? Prayer is work. Yes. Prayer, uh, effectual, fervent prayer that yes. made the sun stand still, that made three and a half years no rain. Then he came back. So you remember when he finished talking, he ran. Elijah ran to go and pray. Yeah. He ran to go and pray. And that's the same principle he was giving the man, the man. Go, go and do this. Man didn't do it enough. He didn't have. So it's work. So I don't know what people say. I don't have to work. I don't know what they mean. Somebody said recently, the slavery of man, work. I said, can you imagine God has given you a gift and you are using <laughs> nonsense, ignorance, and stupidity to throw it away? It doesn't work. That's so, mm. Thank so, you. Yeah, tying it back to the Eden. You know, tying back to Eden, God brought man to take care of the garden. Fantastic. Right? It's not a yeah. down somewhere. He brought man Uncle, to but Uncle, Uncle can ahead. I say something? I yeah, think that yeah. most people, like, I mean, I re- you're very correct, Sister Treasure. And I think that most people sometimes get confused that, okay, you know, some people find their calling at an early age, you know, and some people, I mean, we're all different. But yeah. for uh-huh. instance, I'm, I love to serve people. It's just who I am. I love people. You know, yeah. I love serving. And I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm slow, I've been slowed down right now because of the kids. Mm-hmm. But um, that's, that's who I am. I love to serve. Well, you're I love serving people. your kids. Yeah, I'm sorry, my kids. But in my profession, in my profession, I never knew that I would ever be a nurse. I mm. never knew that. But you know, coming over here and it just took someone to encourage me that oh, have I ever thought of doing nursing? And mm. every day I go to work, and even though it's hard work because it's you are serving the customers, sometimes who are never satisfied. But I I find purpose they need because not everyone can do this kind of profession so you're calling you're right you're calling and your career are tied together they are tied together you can't separate it because they are tied together and and i think it's been it's been a with you know they've washed our mind despite in the kind of culture that nigeria is where you have a you have a calling you have a this you are you're you are called to be this no they need, we need to go back to the basic and start teaching people and young people that your career and your calling are tied together and that you are, you are, you are fulfilling purpose in whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, can, can you imagine this, that you are there and, and as you wake up in the morning, early in the morning will I seek you and you are praising God, praying to him and he endows you with himself. And you step out and you see an old man, one of those cranky people, or even the best of clients, your, your customers, the, the patients. And you just speak into their lives. You notice things. God is leading you, guiding you. Can you imagine the life Jesus lived? Jesus yeah. was yeah. not aloof. The Bible says he went about doing good when the Holy Ghost came upon him. That is yes. the reason why. So imagine, just imagine. I tell people, wake up every morning, fill yourself with the Holy Ghost, be full of the mm-hmm. Holy Ghost, and step out into your work. Souls yeah. will be coming right. to Jesus. You will be mm-hmm. ministry to people. You will be, um, you will be counseling. Homes yeah. will be changed because of you. Your guy in the office, whoever they are, your organization, remember God says you should pray for a nation and leader so that there will be peace. That is the ministry God has. Yeah. We want to separate it. So that God, attention will be to us. We don't want God yeah. to be God. We want to be God. Yeah. So I mean, that I, is the ministry. Happy. Yeah. Are you cooking food? Do you own a restaurant? Are you serving? Whatever you are doing, you are serving people. Yes. I believe yeah. there should be few churches, what we call church. 
where yes. all of us can go and be serviced. I believe there should be one here and that's all. Where all yes. of us should go and be serviced. And remember, I said the greatest is a servant. What yeah. work do yeah. you want? Jesus came and worked. What else yeah. do we want? Yeah. And his payment wasn't money. His payment was the joy and satisfaction. Yet, his oh, needs were met. His yeah. needs were met. So yeah. let's wake up every morning, prepare ourselves spiritually. God has work wherever our work is. Even in our homes, parents have ministry towards their children. When the children are mature, they have ministry towards their parents and neighbors and so many. That is our Jerusalem starting. So it's not a thing of we leave up our, our children and then like they say, pastor's children are always the worst. Why? Because of this same reason. Yeah. yeah. The, the leader you, thinks, oh, yeah. my brother can't go on. <laughs> you, we have canalized the church. This is not the church Jesus Christ envisaged. It's not the ch church Jesus Christ is building. We have brought flesh to bear. And that's why we have problems. That's why the world does not respect us. Right. Hopefully, as we do this, we can be one of those that are manifesting as the sons of God. Because that's Amen. Because Amen. That's the sons of manifest. Amen. The whole of creation is waiting for the sons of God because Hallelujah. of resurrection. They are looking for revival, right? Amen. And yeah, what he told the devil has covered it, covered the glory of God because of the stupid men, stupid, stupidity and greediness of men. Our elders did not teach us well. They lied. Or they were ignorant. They did not know the truth. The truth is that every child of God that is born again is in full time ministry. Full time doesn't mean yes. We are yes. all full time ministry. There's yes. nothing to do yes. with full time ministry. There's nothing like we are all nothing not, like that. <laughs> you know, I I like work that. more than those people that say they are full time ministry. They, they know it's the amount true. number of hours I put into this. They will be ashamed of themselves. Yet I make money. Yet I'm an engineer. I'm a full time employee. Yet I'm, I have, I'm an investor. I'm a business. What more business. life do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing all. You know, rather people stay somewhere and they are begging for money or they are trying to steal God's money. Why do you steal God's money? He gave you a head for a reason. You can make your own money. You don't mm. have to sit down there and be eating tight. You know, Ephesians says that let them that steal, steal no more. But let everybody work. Work. That they might have something to give, including to give and, yeah. the full time. Uh, full time, you are saying you are praying, you are lying, you are not praying. You can use that head to invest in the stock market and get some money. So you don't have to be at the SC of uh, the church. You start Which is the basis you can do. You say what? So that's the least you can do. Jesus said, if you have put my money in the bank, yeah. so I'll get Please interest. That's the basis you can do. Yeah. Baron so Buffett is now. one of the richest men because of that. Yeah. investment, just sitting down, checking it and putting money there and interest come. That's what he's been doing to make money. That is what says that's the least you could have done with my one Absol talent. Absolutely. It, it, it will grow and then you multiply, keep multiplying and growing it. Yeah. Thank God for his grace and deliverance. Because he said it's, it's due to ignorance that his people are perished. They're perishing. Yeah. But he said now, he, he winked at it. He's no more doing that. We must rise up correct ourselves and yeah. tell the truth to one another and Absolutely. challenge one another unto righteousness because there is greatness in the lord and there's a life that we amen. cannot get to amen oh we're already taking five minutes away and i turn left five minutes can we close now we'll continue next week god intentionally frustrated me you know how much i wanted to put a slide to summarize the oldest thing but god knew this was not going to happen it was just my internet was frustrating me everything or is he, I, I didn't need this light. Yeah. So next you're week, I'm you're not you're going to you're in, you're in Nigeria, ah, uncle. Your own. Nigeria. Your own. <laughs> <laughs> come back. Come back. Thank you. Thank you. That God, God, knew, God knew I was in Nigeria, so he used Nigeria to post me. You don't need to be my son. Don't, don't stop struggling. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. So let me release you. Tom, I hope we answered your question. Yes, 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 yes. I really want us to discuss it. And the discussion is so great. So I really awesome. like the, the point. Awesome.